those are my disclosures. And I think we all know there's been a seismic shift in prostate cancer management in a lot of different uh, arenas. And the question is, how does data inform practice, right? Because there's a lot of other influences, a lot of cogwheels influencing prostate cancer practice these days. Um, I'm going to jump into it and I'm going to get into, uh, go over a number of randomized trials, both phase two and phase three, to inform uh, the role of radiation in metastatic disease. But what we do know is that PET can identify, PET only can identify 56% of the time uh, metastatic disease that may have not been detected by conventional imaging and high risk disease. And there's been this expansion of the oligometastatic disease. Uh, state, right, which is usually defined by conventional imaging. And then there's these definitions of high versus low volume. Generally speaking, high volume metastatic disease is four or more bone metastases or visceral metastases. And th that's, that's actually not, you know, that's with conventional imaging. So what's the definition with uh, PET-based imaging? We don't quite know. And there's been this evolution of metastatic disease, right? And the idea is that you have to treat the primary and all the sites of metastases to, to aim for cure. Um, so I'm just going to focus on prostate-directed therapy initially. And uh, hopefully everybody knows about the STAMPEDE trial that was a randomized trial of hormones, a plus-minus radiation to the primary in metastatic disease. It showed an overall uh, failure-free survival benefit in this large trial. But then if you looked at kind of the low burden group in particular, that's where the benefit really seemed to be. And that actually led to an overall survival benefit with a hazard ratio of 0.68 in the low burden metastatic state for treating the primary with radiation. There was the HORAD trial, which was negative for overall survival, but look at this. The hazard ratio in the low volume state is exactly the same as the Stampede trial, as you can see here on this forest plot. And so I think there is, there is definitely a lot of good data supporting treating the primary in those settings. The, if you look at the Stampede trial a little closer, the overall survival benefit extended beyond four bony mets up to about eight. At least at seven, there was still incremental benefit. So the role for treating the primary uh, you know, that, that sort of definition of low versus high volume needs probably further clarification. And there was no worsening of grade three or higher toxicity by adding radiation in the stampede trial. Uh, to the points earlier, radiation has toxicity. We can't deny that. But in terms of kind of significant grade three or higher, in these trials, you're not seeing that signal in terms of added toxicity. Um, so this is kind of the update of the trial of Stampede, showing this overall survival benefit in the low volume uh, state. Uh, I just want to highlight that this benefit is exactly the same. This hazard ratio, 0 0.64, is exactly the same as the addition of abiraterone in metastatic hormone-sensitive prostate cancer, low volume, okay? Exactly the same. So then there's the PEACE-1 trial. Uh, and this study looked at ADT plus minus docetaxel, uh, or sorry, plus docetaxel, plus minus ABI, plus, plus minus radiation. And it showed that radiation added to intensified systemic therapy improved radiographic progression-free survival, metastatic castrate-sensitive prostate cancer-free survival, but not overall survival. It also delayed time to severe GU events, and overall it was felt that radiation should be a standard of care in this setting. So I'll just go through this study quickly. This study actually used radiation in 74 gray and 37 fractions. Stampede was much more hypofractionated. Uh, these were the endpoints that I've just alluded to. And here it is, radiographic progression-free survival, adding radiation to standard of care plus Abbey. There was very significant benefit to the radiation, but not overall survival benefit in this uh, setting. Probably because it was a bit of a different population, it's more contemporary study, a lot more patients in this trial received docetaxel, and there was probably better salvage systemic therapies in this era as well. Um, overall survival benefit, again, not, not uh, significant, but as you can see, the hazard ratios are certainly suggesting possible benefit. Um, and in this trial, very similar to Stampede, 43% were low volume metastatic, 57 high volume. And if you look at the overall population, there was a benefit to time to serious GU events. So avoiding significant GU events, there was a benefit to the adding, uh, addition of radiation. And that applied again to the high volume state as well as the low volume state. 
I will want to see this publication once it comes out because one of the definitions of serious GU events is the receipt of radiation, <laughs> right, for progression. And I think that needs a little bit further clarification. Um, there was also benefit in the high volume metastatic uh, state to avoid it or to, in terms of castration resistance free survival. I do think that's an important endpoint. Uh, so avoiding castration resistance or increasing the time to uh, that, that event. And there was benefit certainly to the addition of radiation, again, also in the high volume state. Again, there was no measurable increase in grade three to five toxicity. Uh, we can't blow off the grade one and twos, but, but in terms of serious toxicity, there was no significant difference. And again, the authors felt that this should be added, certainly in radiation should be added in low volume metastatic disease and possibly in some high volume uh, situations as well. So that, those, that's the data supporting prostate-directed therapy. What about metastasis-directed therapy? Uh, we all know we're getting PETs and we're finding nodes like this uh, or like this, uh, or in favorable high-risk disease, we get a PET and there is a sacral metastasis, that we're seeing this a lot. So there are trials to inform using radiation to those sites of metastases. The STOMP trial, um, actually, that was PET-detected lesions and showed that treating those lesions extended time to the initiation of ADT compared to observation. So the, here's the STOMP trial. It used PET. It, the definition was three or fewer metastases. The primary endpoint was ADT-free survival. There was definitely a lot of benefit in terms of uh, uh, PSA response and, and uh, 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 biochemical progression-free survival. But there is also certainly big signals in terms of ADT-free survival, so avoiding uh, or increasing time to ADT. There's also the Oriel trial, um, and this was in three or more METs conventional imaging detected and doing SBRT to those METs, showing massive benefit in terms of uh, progression, avoiding progression. Um, and so improving progression-free survival to treating those sites of metastases. It again, was safe and well-tolerated with no grade three or higher AEs in this study. And interestingly, again, this study was using conventional imaging. It had to be three or fewer METs, but some of these patients got PSMA PET. And if you did SBRT to all the lesions, um, total consolidation of all lesions, that improved progression-free survival. Indeed, it actually decreased incidence of new METs at six months by doing so, and therefore total consolidation of all PET-detected lesions improved distant metastasis-free survival. There's also the Sabre Comet trial that I think we all know that suggests even a potential overall survival advantage. I will note that this trial, if you exclude the prostate patients, the p-value is no longer significant. That's telling us that the benefit is certainly there with the prostate cancer patients. This study was a mishmash of tumor types, but um, it seems like the prostate group was driving a lot of it. And there's, uh, this just summarizes all the trials. They're all phase two. Okay, that's important to remember. There's also a study in the castrate-resistant oligometastatic setting called the ARTO trial, again showing benefit of the addition of radiation to sites of metastases um, when abiraterone is being used in that disease state. So it's, it, this doesn't just apply to the castrate-sensitive state. I'll skip over that. Stampede 2 is coming, and the part one of the arms is going to be plus minus SBRT in metastatic disease, so phase three data is needed in when treating sites of metastases, Stampede 2 is coming. There's a variety of other trials out there. NRGG011, for example, is looking at SBRT plus minus, uh, it's actually re relagolix, not darolutamide, uh, in oligometastatic disease and a variety of other trials. But I think the Stampede phase three will be very interesting. So in closing, I think we have a rapidly evolving landscape for metastatic hormone sensitive disease and more aggressive management is seemingly leading to improved outcomes. In low volume disease, adding radiation improves progression-free survival, castrate-resistant-free survival, time to serious GU, GU event-free uh, survival, and overall survival, right, stampede, without increased toxicity. In high-volume metastatic disease, adding radiation to systemic therapy improves castrate-resistance-free survival, time to serious GU event-free survival, though, again, we need clarification uh, on that endpoint regarding the receipt of radiation, as I mentioned. 
There are a lot of different radiation schedules that can be considered, including, uh, you know, when treating the primary in five fractions like SBRT can be made simpler. We need further de definition of what constitutes low vo volume versus high volume disease, especially in the era of PET. And as we saw in those phase two trials, SBRT to sites of metastasis improves time to ADT, improves progression-free survival, may even improve overall survival, but we need phase three data in that setting. And hopefully biomarkers such as those that were talked, by, uh, talked to about by Peter uh, may be helpful. And so really the themes of old radiation trials, the past, is adding ADT, radiation doses, field sizes, brachytherapy, but the future and current trials are the use of genomics and imaging to improve risk stratification, patient selection, the use of next generation anti-androgen uh, therapy and other novel agents with radiation in earlier disease spaces, and more aggressive management of metastatic disease, which I've really discussed here. And again, I think metastatic disease, and certainly oligometastatic disease, warrants multimodal therapy, and such patients should be seen in a multidisciplinary environment. The scope of my talk was not to address surgery, but there's the whole discussion of surgery and metastatic disease as well. And so multi-D care is needed. Multi-D care has all kinds of benefits that I list here, including improving survival. So hopefully data will, uh, you know, drive the cogwheels towards good, good practice. Thank you very much.